Hey, this is Aron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to animate a signature on the screen and maybe show you a few ways to bring it up to the next level. Okay, let's get started. So here I am in After Effects with not much going on. I've imported a TIFF image of a signature belonging to a Mr. Arnold Santiago. Okay, well actually, it's a fake name and signature, and as you can see, I have the handwriting of an 8-year-old, which is one of the many reasons I went into computer animation and stayed far away from a pencil and paper. Before we can start working on the animation, we need to first trace this signature using the pen tools. So I'll grab hold of my pen tools, and I'll start clicking. As you can see, by default, After Effects creates a yellow mask, which is pretty hard to work with because you can't really see it. I'm going to change that. So hit M to reveal the layer mask, and then right click on the yellow square, and from the color pop-up, choose a color. In my case, I think I'll pick red, and then I'll click OK. Now I'll just finish creating my path. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you watch this whole thing. OK, jumping ahead in time, I've got my signature, which you'll notice is actually made up of four separate paths. Two for the name, one for the line through the T, and another for the dot over the I. OK, so now it's time to copy these masks into a new composition. Select all of the masks and then choose Edit, Copy. Now I'm just going to jump into my 640 by 480 composition where I already have a plain white solid layer. That's it, there's nothing else there, no animation of any kind, just a solid layer. With that solid layer selected, I'll choose Edit, Paste. Well, these masks are clearly a little too big for the composition, so we have to resize them. So, with the white solid selected, hit M to reveal all masks in the layer. Select all the masks by selecting the first mask, and then hold down Shift while selecting the last mask. Then, up in the comp window, double click on any point on any mask. As you can see, this creates a free transform bounding box around all masks that we can interactively scale. Holding down Control, Alt, and Shift together as you scale it will proportionally scale things towards the center. Once you've got it scaled to fit in the screen, just hit Enter to close the bounding box. Now at this point, I don't want to mess with any of these masks, so I'm going to lock them all by using the mask lock switch here on the left for each mask. Then I'm going to make all locked masks invisible by choosing Layer, Mask, Hide Locked Masks. Next, I'm going to add a stroke effect to create the actual signature over the masks. So with the solid white layer selected, choose Effect, Generate, Stroke. At this point, you'll see no difference because by default, After Effects creates a white stroke. So we have a white stroke and a white background, we're not going to see anything. Let's take a look at the effect settings and make a few changes. For starters, why don't we set the color of the stroke to black? OK. And then also set the stroke size to 3. Good. Now I'm sure you've noticed that only one of our masks is stroked right now, and that's because by default, After Effects strokes the first mask on a layer. If you check the path pull down, it shows us each mask on the layer. So if I have it switched to mask 2, the second mask would be stroked. But rather than having to add four stroke effects to stroke each individual mask, we can just choose this option here called All Masks, which as you can see, strokes all of the masks in the layer. By the way, I'm using the terms mask and path interchangeably here, but that's not really correct. A mask is a closed path, so technically these are paths, not masks, because they're not closed. But let's just keep it simple. Next, let's animate the signature appearing. If you take a look here in the effects panel, you'll see that there's a start and end property. These properties determine how much and what parts of the mask get stroked. With the default value of 100 for the end, we get a fully stroked mask. But if we lower that value, we see that less and less of it is stroked. So let's say we set this to 80%. If we also set the start value to 20%, then only the middle 60% of each mask is stroked. Let me just undo that. Now, making sure you're at the first frame in the timeline, let's add a keyframe for the end property with a value of 0%. Since both the start and end values are the same, we won't see any strokes. Now, let's move down to the 3 second mark and add a new keyframe for the end value at 100%. If we scroll through time here, we can see that the masks are all animating on, but they're all doing it at once. 
I want the masks to animate on in sequence, meaning that it should animate on as if it were actually being written by hand so that only one part at a time is revealed. For that, we need to use this little option under All Masks called Stroke Sequentially. When I turn this option on, each mask is stroked in order. Now that order is not determined by name, though you might think so. I know that the masks are called Mask 1, Mask 2, Mask 3, and Mask 4, but that's just a name that After Effects assigned to the mask based on order of creation. It has nothing to do with the actual mask order. Mask order here refers to stack order, not numerical names. If I unlock these masks and start moving them around in the stack order, a bit like so, then the stroke order is changed. So if I watch the animation of the stroke now, it's not going in order. Let me just undo that, making sure that I relock all of my masks. Okay. A quick RAM preview and we have a signature. But let's take it a little further. I want to roughen the edges of my signature so it looks a little less CGI and a little more ink or pencil-like. However, before we can roughen the edges, we need to give the signature actual edges that can be roughened. See, right now we can see our white solid, which means the edges of this image are the edges of the solid and not the signature. So, if we want to roughen the edges of the signature, we need to get rid of the background. To do that, we have an effects property here called Paint Style with three options. On Original Image, which just puts the stroke over the footage as we have now. Reveal Original Image, which makes the stroke work more like an alpha mat, revealing the image below as it's stroked. And finally, On Transparent, which gets rid of the background altogether and just shows the stroke. And that's the option we want. Okay, now let's roughen some edges, shall we? With the white solid layer selected, choose Effect, Stylize, Roughen Edges. Instantly, we have rough edges, but as you can see, the effect is way too strong. Let's fix that. In the Effects panel, set the edge border from 8 down to 4. This property specifies how far from an alpha channel edge the effect extends. So by lowering it, we're tightening up those edges a bit. That's already looking a lot better, but not quite the way I want. So let's make a few more changes. Set the Fractal Influence to 0.5. This property specifies how much of the roughness is influenced by fractal calculations. And we've just lowered that by half, which gets rid of a lot of the roughness. But maybe it's a little too smooth now? I don't know. So let's set the scale to 50. Again, half as much as it was before. This property determines the size of the fractal that I mentioned. And by doing this, we create smaller bumps and edges along the border. A quick RAM preview, and we're looking good. One last thing I want to mention. Since the stroke percentage is keyframable, you can add keyframes in time to make it hold at certain points. If I wanted to really simulate a signature being written, I'd probably have a few frames of hold between the first name being written and the last, and of course the T dash and the dotting of the I as well. So I can just move along in time, find the point at which one section ends and the other begins, and add a keyframe right on that spot. Now, you may have to adjust the keyframe value slightly until you get the perfect stopping point, because you can get a little of one side, a little of the other. You'll probably need to play around a little, but once you have it, you're good. Then I can move a few frames down in time and copy and paste the same keyframe so that I have a space of time between both names where no animation is happening. Then, just do the same thing for every other section. You can always shorten or lengthen the entire animation as needed. Jumping ahead in time, a final RAM preview and it's all looking good. Not so hard, right? Now you can just cross your T's and dot your I's and you're good to go. De nuevo, este es Arnold Santiago para CreativeCow.net I mean, uh, once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. Really need to stop doing that.